The Sundays after Epiphany began with Jesus' baptism and end with three disciples' vision of his transfiguration. In Mark's story of Jesus' baptism, apparently only Jesus sees the Spirit descending and hears the words from heaven. But now Jesus' three closest friends hear the same words naming him God's beloved. As believers, Paul writes, we are enabled to see the God light in Jesus' face because the same God who created light in the first place has shown in our hearts to give us that vision. The light of God's glory in Jesus has enlightened us through baptism and shines in us also for others to see. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone on this February 14th, 2021. A couple of announcements before we begin service. Um, first of all, I would like to add to our prayer list um, the family of Kay Noonan. Kay is a friend of Jim Allen's and also a friend of mine um, whose father has been placed in hospice care this week in Iowa and is not expected to make it through the end of the week. So we want to keep Kay, Jim, and their families in our prayers. We also want to, I also want to thank everyone who came yesterday to deliver communion elements to everyone and those people who came to pick them up. Uh, it was greatly appreciated if you did so. Um, and those people who are delivering in the frigid cold weather deserve a special applause, a special thank you. Um, please thank them and thank you all for whatever you do for First Lutheran Church. We hope to see you soon, and have a great week. Hello and welcome to worship for this Transfiguration Sunday. We begin with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from the second chapter of 2 Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourselves live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to one to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. 
Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into the whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is verses 1 through 6 of Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. With a consuming flame before and around about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Even if our gospel, gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has binded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Today's gospel is from the ninth chapter of Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, 
and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The season of Epiphany, a word which means enlightenment or revelation, concludes today with the festival of the Transfiguration, which has also been called the Little Easter. This Little Easter occurs right before the beginning of Lent, which will lead us to Big Easter. It's a Little Easter because for just a moment, Jesus appears as he will appear after the resurrection. For a moment, the windows of heaven are open, and these weary, doubtful, fearful disciples can see ahead to the end of the story. They can see who they are truly following. Peter, as usual, doesn't quite get it. And I like the fact that Peter and often the rest of the disciples are pictured as bumbling doubters in the Gospels. Even though Peter is one of Jesus' inner circle and he is invited along special on special trips like this one up the mountain, uh, he rebukes Jesus. He doubts. He misunderstands. He denies. It is as if the Gospels were offering us comfort about our own shortcomings as disciples. Not quite getting it seems to be one of the oldest traditions surrounding following Jesus. In response to this marvelous unveiling, which takes place on Transfiguration Mount, this miraculous vision of what God has done, is doing, and promises yet to do, Peter wants to set up three tents. Why? There was a festival called the Festival of Booths or the Festival of Tents in which fathers would camp with their sons as a sort of reenactment and remembrance of those years which Israel spent wandering in the wilderness before they came into their land. Mark offers some commentary on this desire saying Peter didn't know what he was talking about because he was afraid, but it makes a person wonder if this miraculous meeting that is taking place on this mountaintop has not brought back memories for him. Memories of fellowship with his own father. Memories of feeling the presence of God through participating in this tradition of the ancestors. A feeling connected to that great story of how God led the people out of slavery and into freedom. When Moses and Elijah show up, Peter's fathers in the faith, and Jesus appears in his divine glory, would it have not felt the same for Peter here in a wilderness place, an in-between place, and yet united with these people and with God? Moses and Elijah, like his own father had done, connecting him to history, even as he continues to follow Jesus into the future. Perhaps that. And perhaps, as other commenters have wondered, does not Peter simply wish for that moment not to end? The future is uncertain, especially with Jesus having only in the previous chapter predicted that he must be crucified. The past has been full of hardship, of crowds pressing in with their needs, with their illnesses, and with their demon possessions. But here in this moment, all of that seems worth it. Here in this moment of transfiguration, doubt is gone. Everything is suddenly in agreement. Let's build three tents so we can all just stay here just like we are now. 
But of course, the mountaintop moments cannot last forever. They serve a purpose, to strengthen us for the work that is left to do. On that mountaintop on that day, heaven opened up and gave disciples a glimpse of ultimate truth. How has heaven opened up in your life? How has Jesus, as heaven's ambassador, shown up for you to strengthen you on the way? Last summer, while we were still getting used to this new way of life during the pandemic, Jesus showed up in my life as my nine-year-old daughter, Zoe. She knew I was having to do something different at church. She knew that we were worshiping outside and that I was coming to church early to set up an outdoor space. And for whatever reason, she was adamant that I not have to do that alone. The only time I left her behind, because I was in a hurry, she was irate and didn't let me hear the end of it. So I made it a point every Sunday morning all summer to wake her up and bring her along. She can only carry one folding chair at a time, while me and Dudley can carry four, but her help had to do with more than physical work. Zoe is a talker, and so there was never very much empty air on our rides to and from church. And we never stay on one topic for very long, so your brain is always shifting gears. And I wonder, if I had not had that, what I would have been thinking about instead. Would I have been worrying about the outdoor services? Worrying about what would happen when it got too cold to do them? Worrying if people would accept the idea of watching a YouTube video in lieu of service? Worrying if people would continue to support the church financially, even if they didn't get to come to church? And it isn't that those things never crossed my mind in those months, but they certainly did not on the Lord's Day as I was preparing for worship. God saw fit to fill those hours with words from a little messenger from Jesus who would not let me worry. She thought she was carrying folding chairs, but she was really carrying me. I saw Jesus again the first time we were taking communion during the season of Advent via Zoom, something we start again this upcoming Sunday with Ash Wednesday. Once again, we will be delivering pre-consecrated elements taken from the altar here at first to your home so that we may share in that one bread which Christ promises us is his own body, that we may share the sacrament through Lent and Holy Week. But that first Sunday of Advent, as my screen filled up with your smiling faces, and we all struggled to open our tiny communion kits for the first time, I had a sense that Jesus might as well be in one of those little squares looking on all of us doing the best we can to be church in a difficult situation. We prefer to come in the doors and see all our friends in person, to shake hands and to hug and drink coffee together, to hear the organ and the piano in person, to be under this cross together, hearing the words, singing, praying. But it was apparent to me, at least that day, that Jesus was with us and that Jesus can make church out of just about anything. In fact, from what I know of Jesus, he seems to get a kick out of showing up through things that people might not think are good enough. Born in a manger, baptized in a river, dying on a cross, coming to us in water and bread and wine, common things. Surprising those who follow him by being found where he is least expected and in what might be considered humble. And when he does so, he continues to shine the light of God into every dark place, even the dark places in our minds and hearts where doubt and hopelessness begin to fester. The Father's voice from heaven said of Jesus, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. And so in times of uncertainty especially, that is our calling. When we don't know what to say, to think, when we're unsure of the future, we do well to listen and watch for Jesus who once on transfiguration shone brilliantly as the Son of God and who continues to bring to the dark corners of our hearts and minds the light of God. May you see Jesus today and may you be strengthened by his presence.
Now let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundance of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us now offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel, proclaimed in both word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all of creation, for life forming in the dark earth and the ocean deep for mountains and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders, attorneys, advocates, civil servants, and the leaders of our government, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who suffer on this day, especially those we now name aloud or in our hearts. That Christ, our healer, transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For companions on life's journey at First Lutheran, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, for guidance during the struggles we face in these uncertain times that God's glory is revealed around and among us. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, especially the missionaries at Cyril and Methodius whom we commemorate today, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Now let us pray using the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.